When it comes to router safety, router operation, you want to make sure you have clamps to hold down your work. The routers are designed with two hands, that is a lot set up so you have control of the router during the entire operation. Before you plug the router in, you want to give the trigger or switch a quick check to make sure it's in the off position. Otherwise, the router will take off uh, against your work when you start to when you plug it in. Position the router so that the base is not, is on the wood, as you can see here, but the router bit is not in contact with the wood. Have a firm grip when you start. It'll have a little bit of startup torque. The router direction should actually be uh, against the rotation of the bit. And when you're out on the outside of a workpiece, this will be at a counterclockwise direction. So you're going to make sure the router will not come in contact with the cord during this operation. This would be kind of a shocking experience if it did. Router cuts. For example, I've got a rabbit bit in this, situ in this router setup. You want to make a maximum cut of a quarter of an inch. Maybe a 3 16th or an eighth is really recommended, but the maximum depth of cut would be about a quarter of an inch. As soon as you're finished, turn off the power. Make sure the router has stopped before you set it down. If you set it down on its side, its top, or in a specially uh, designed base that you craft out of some scrap wood. This prevents you from damaging the bit during storage. Do not touch them. If you need to change bits, give it a few seconds, do another operation with another tool, allow it to cool down. Do not touch the bit immediately after use. They will be hot. Router table. Remember the three inch margin of safety. And if a board is narrower than three inches when you're operating, your hand should never pass in front of the bit. It should jump over the bit. That way you're directly not in front of it. You want to keep downward pressure with your fingers, both hands. You want to hook your thumb over that edge. You can see right here. You, uh, to prevent your hand from slipping on the board. When it comes to working with a router table, you want to router the end grain first. The reason for that is you get chip out when it comes to the end. When you, then when you do the long grain, the chip out will be removed. If you did the long grain first, You'd have your profile and then you do the end grain and it would chip out. It's inevitable that it will chip out when you come to the corner. You can slow down and create less of chip out, but however, when you go too slow, it causes burn marks. You got to find that right speed because if you go too fast, it's going to cause chip out and increase the, rans increase the chance of the board kicking. If at all possible, use a router table. Trying to router a profile on a board this small would not only be a tedious task of having to clamp it and reposition it, clamp it and reposition it, it's a little bit safer, it's a little bit faster to use a router table. So if all possible, use a router table. You, when you router the end grain, use a miter gauge. Or on a router table, you do not want to do a freehand. You want to use an accessory as a sled, or in this case, a miter gauge. Basically the same, I'm going to turn, turn it on, use my palm to push the... Uh, Miter gauge forward, my left hand is actually going to pull it up back up against it and keep it tight against. Again, again, I'm holding my thumbs and my fingers in a position where we will not slide during the operation. Chip outs occurred on the edge of that board on the top half where it was rounded over. However, when you would router the long, long grain edge of that board, it would actually remove that little bit of chip out. One final note, when you're using a router table, it produces a lot of chips. It will actually build up in the fence area. Please try, it, if possible, to use a dust collection system or a shop vac attachment. Two different sh shank sizes or shaft sizes. Router bits come in two basic types. You notice some of these don't have wheels at the bottom. Others do. The ones with the wheels at the bottom are called bearing guided bits or edge guide bits. These will run along the edge of the workpiece controlling the depth and the profile. Now the, ed the quality of your edge will dictate the quality of the cut or how straight the cut is. The other types of bits are called grooving bits which are designed for work on the interior of the piece. This is a uh, U-shaped groove or a core box, a straight groove and a dovetail bit Dovetail is obviously used for drawer construction. These other two types of bits are for sign making, decorative work, 
and straight grooves for examples dados and slots. When it comes time to change a bit on a router, in shop classes you make sure you ask the instructor for permission to change the bit. It may be set up at a certain depth or a certain procedure that you're not aware of. But most of the time, as long as you get permission, the instructor will either aid you in changing bits or change the bit for you. you change your bits, you remove the base, unlocking it however this, the setup allows, uh, it's a lever or a, a lock. Position the two wrenches in place, turn them opposite of each other, break it loose, you should be able to hand tighten it at this point. If the router bit's kind of stuck, it's okay to give it a little tap, this will break loose any welding or minor sticking from the heat transfer. Again, that's a reason to have the thicker uh, shaft, half inch shaft. To install the bit, position it all the way down, then actually bring it up. You want it as far, as in, far in as it can be without touching the bottom of the shaft. This is for heat transfer and vibration purposes. Tighten it by hand, reinstall your two wrenches, snug it up. You want to make sure it's good and snug so that way during the process the bit doesn't vibrate up or down in, in the case with gravity causing the bit to go deeper. Reinstall the base, tighten up your lever as required and set the depth appropriately. On the plunge router the procedure is the same however it only requires one wrench it has a call it lock button which you press the button in, lock the shaft and loosen the router up. I found it's a lot easier to do this when it's laying down. Again, the procedure would be the same. Loosen up the collet, remove the bit, reinstall the new one, tighten it by hand as far as you can get it, and snug it in place, and you're ready to go.